This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. We've progressed our project, added spaces, zones, and divided the building up so we can do some more accurate analysis. From the Analyze tab, select Heating and Cooling Loads. This gives us a representation of all the spaces and zones that we've created in our building. Here, we can define our building type. We can again modify the location as we have in previous exercises. And change the building service for the entire building, as well as the construction. So anything we do in this dialog box affects the entire building. Let's look at the details. Under the Details tab, we can see that we've got the option to see spaces or analytical surfaces. Let's take the spaces first of all. Initially, these are grouped into the zones that were created in another exercise. Let's take Level 3 South as an example. If I select it, you can see that I can change how that particular zone is heated or cooled. How do I know which area of the building I'm looking at? I can use the isolate command to isolate that part of the building. So let's look at level 3, Office South. If I expand this tree, you can see that I'm now looking at the individual spaces and here I have an error. Let's look at the related warnings. And in this instance, I know that I can ignore this particular warning. It's telling me that there is another space with the same number. So for this exercise, this warning can be ignored. Let's examine 73 Hall 4 in more detail. I can click on the Analytical Surfaces button. Clicking on this will then go through and analyse all the spaces and zones in the building. You can see at the bottom left of the screen the computer's going through and calculating the surfaces for all the spaces and zones. Now, we can expand this tree and look at the interior walls. The interior walls also show the doors. So although in our model we haven't actually created walls, doors and windows, the spaces and zones that we've created are aware of those walls, doors and windows that are in the linked file. If we go back up to the entire space, here we can define what that space is and the construction type for that space. Here we can create a new construction type and choose whether the external walls, the interior walls, ceilings, floors, slabs, doors and exterior windows are any different from the rest of the generic building. We can choose the occupancy levels whether these are the default, or whether they're specified. And the heat gain per person. Again, whether this is the default or a specified value. Electrical loads can also be specified using either default values, specified values, or actual values. The actual value will be coming from any of the lighting equipment that you place into your model. This is the same for power. 
we can save these settings, come back to the heating and cooling loads, and click on calculate. Again, you can see down here in the bottom left that Revit is taking its time in processing the surfaces, spaces and volumes to create a report. This report will be available for us in the project browser. Scrolling down in the project browser, we'll now find a section called reports and our first load report. And scrolling down in the actual load report itself, we can start seeing some of the calculated data. Clicking on any of these links will take you directly to the particular space.